in Outlast Trials, there is no more essential part of your kit than your rig. I've used them all, and I've talked to a few people who main each rig, and I'm going to tell you my own thoughts, mostly, on where each rig stands when you put them up against each other. Coming into the number 4 spot is going to be X-Ray, and this is even ignoring the fact that it lags the entire game for every player most of the times that it's used. So the X-Ray rig is going to allow you to, you guessed it, see through walls. The upgrades that differentiate it from the other rigs are 2, 3, 4, and 6, so let's take a look at those first. Shared intel allows allies to see the location of tagged enemies, incredibly useful for newer players and very underrated for more of a sneaky playstyle. Resources intel is the backbone of X-Ray in my opinion, and doesn't have a ton of value until you unlock this upgrade. But with resources intel you're going to be able to see all consumable items nearby. This is absolutely fantastic for making sure you and your teammates inventory, don't be selfish, is always stocked. Classified Intel allows you to see sensitive items nearby. This is really nice for posters and getting all the documents, but seeing traps and mines is negligible as they have prominent visual and audio cues. Lastly, Battery Transfer, which recharges your night vision, is actually pretty valuable as it makes almost certain you will never ever need to pick up a battery, although this effect here on X-Ray probably does get outshadowed by almost the same but slightly better effect over on Stun. X-Ray has its uses and can be a very friendly option for new players to always have stocked inventory slots and keep track of enemies. While I do have it at 4, I don't really believe the gap between the other rigs is as crazy as some people would have you believe. With X-Ray, you can stack the strong arm amp and always have access to bottles and bricks to deter enemies. And in the event you take a knife to the stomach, you'll always be able to find heals. The main reason it falls to the final slot though is that it doesn't really help you when it comes to getting objectives finished, and it's all utility and no bite. And with enough game knowledge, you can easily know enemy and item locations without the use of a rig, in which case it becomes a glorified battery charger and poster finder. Taking the number 3 position is going to be the stun. In my opinion, the stun and heal are so incredibly close in this ranking, and I went back and forth for a while. First though, let's talk about those differences in upgrades to see what makes stun useful, which are upgrades 3, 5, and 6. Upgrade 3, Disarm, is going to destroy all traps, door traps, and enemy mines. Avoiding these and just using your stun on enemies is a much better option, but if a trap gets caught in the crossfire, I mean it's cool I guess. Restore is for those of you who play bowling with the bumpers on. It's going to reduce your cooldown time if you don't hit any enemies, which is supposed to buff the disarm upgrade from before, but all it ends up doing is nothing as again, you'll mostly be using stun on enemies. Electric Boost is like the stim pack of Outlast Trials, and again, works to pair really well with the upgrade before it. They want us to use stun on anything but an enemy. Sadly though, this rig is called stun and not stim, and it's very usable but unlikely that we'll be chunking them at our friends' heads or our own feet to get the stamina battery boost. The main case for stun over heal is that it's always better to be proactive than it is to be reactive. Stopping an enemy from hitting you in the first place is way better than recovering after taking damage. For both you utility and your grade. Rolling into the number 2 slot is heal, my first love. Taking damage in this game is inevitable, new or veteran player alike. There is a reason why getting out of just 10 trials without taking damage is an entire batch. This game is designed to punch you in the face, and I mean that literally. To get started, we'll look at upgrades 3, 5, and 6, which, as before, give this rig its own unique flair. Upgrade 3, Silent Help, healing occurs silently. This is cool, I suppose, but why? I mean, I kind of feel like it should have always been silent. I didn't really feel this upgrade as much as I would have liked to, but apparently using this without silent help is like stepping on broken glass, so it's useful, I guess. Upgrade 5, Detox. I've actually got so much use out of Detox, but the further you get into the game and the higher level you are, the more you play with people who just never ever get psychosis, it becomes a lot less useful, but it is awesome utility for sure. Upgrade 6, Poison, is deceptively strong. Healing Gas will briefly slow down affected enemies. You run faster than most enemies by default, but they can be run on your butt a lot. This, when used effectively, actually gives the necessary space to gap some of these faster enemy types, as well as utility when friends are being chased and you need to be a distraction. The downside is, you've got to be pretty close to get this slow to activate, which can put you in more danger than you want to be in. All in all, heal is mostly slotting in over stun because of all the various ways damage can be taken in this game, and that it's always a good idea to have at least one heal player, whereas you can make do with having no stun players. And look no further than the number one spot to understand what I mean by that. Damn. 
Who would have thought the Mine perk would actually be the most powerful in a game for once? If you chose a Bouncing Betty or a Claymore over a Frag, I genuinely hope your KD is always negative. Jokes aside though, this thing is strong. Probably a bit too strong. So the Blind perk is a deployable mine that emits a gas cloud that stops enemies from seeing you. What they don't say is that on detonation it also stuns, stopping enemies from hitting you. This thing feels like it lasts forever, and you can place multiple if it recharges before your previous one is used. So essentially, once your mine is ready to roll, you don't have to wait to place this thing down. Find a nice area that a lot of traffic goes through, set that thing down preemptively, and you'll have a mine to run to if you need to escape and you'll already begin to recharge your next mine. So, upgrade number three, deploy technique. All this does is let you place the mine down faster, which is actually kind of nice. If an enemy is chasing you, especially in Program X, they can sometimes get a swipe in before you place that sucker down. So this upgrade is actually felt. If you're placing them strategically beforehand though, it's kind of useless. Upgrade number five needs to be removed from the game. I'm not joking. It's called recharge, and it lets your mine recharge for a second detonation after its first one. Two mines for the price of one, and again, if you're setting them in good spots, it's just so clutch. Upgrade number six, Frenzy, because the last thing to boost the mine to insane levels of outright brokenness is to give you adrenaline when you step through the mine's gas cloud. The one thing that Stun had going for it is also built into the mine, and because that cloud lasts so long, you can run through it freely. It, it's just too good. This thing is way too good. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, all of the rigs ranked, and as always, this is largely influenced by personal opinion, and I've played a lot of this game, but not nearly as much as some, so if you know something I don't, and you have a disagreement, please let me know down in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video, Bye bye